one aspect of pro wrestling that we haven't discussed a lot here on the channel is video games. Um, you might have seen us have a live stream with some of the most recent 2K. You might have even caught a little bit of the PWP World Cup. But besides that, we haven't really dove into the video games. Um, which is kind of funny to think about, considering, you know... I, w I wouldn't say we're pro gamers. We're avid gamers. I'm a pro gamer. You're a pro gamer? Yeah, I play professional Pong. Okay, Tetris. okay. Yeah. To but, um... Home. Pro wrestling and video games, they've kind of had a hand-in-hand -hand connection for a long time. The, the one that I can think of the earliest is probably the for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Just It was just called Pro Wrestling. Um, it had Starman, which John Cena showed on his Instagram. WWF, one of their first games that you could actually play the matches was WWF WrestleMania. I know that they had one of the ones where you would type in your prompt and the computer would respond and I kind of find those boring. Sorry if you like those, but I, I, I want to be able to actually play the game. I don't want to have to think about my I don't want to play computer chess. Um, but WWF's WrestleMania, there was basic punches, basic kicks, maybe a move here or there. Nothing fancy. They move on to WWF WrestleMania Steel Cage Challenge. And then over the years, you know, they'd have others like WWF the arcade, or arcade, the arcade game, which was more Mortal Kombat like. Undertaker would throw tombstones. Shawn Michaels would throw hearts. It wasn't just WWF and WWE that had games though. WCW also had video games. Um, their first one also was able to be played on the Nintendo Entertainment System. People probably recognize that game as the one that's used in the meme showing how long Sting's been wrestling. <laughs> it's just, yeah. um, and then, of course, they went throughout the years having some other games. They had a lot of them in the late 90s. WCW Mayhem is my personal favorite from the WCW catalog. It borrows a lot from No Mercy. Um, but it's got that, WC, that late WCW roster, which is stacked. Hogan, Goldberg, Sting, Bret Hart, The Giant, Ric Flair. Uh, it, it's it's a fun time. ECW had a couple games. TNA, I think, had two or three. Um, there's also the Fire Pro Wrestling series, which is a love letter to pro wrestling. There's all sorts of promotions with wrestlers on there. And it's kind of like NCAA, where it doesn't have the actual name but unlike ncaa it's got a fake name that kind of gives away to who it is and in their bio it'll kind of give away and they'll look it'll give it away and if you want you can edit it which i would always do i'd go through and i'd edit the rosters i'd i'd make it updated i'd even switch the name of the company to what it's supposed to represent um aw of course is a video game um as of recording uh, yesterday, it was one of the free games on PlayStation Plus. Where did get on that? Uh, what's it called? The their better Stadium one Stampede. Almost? Stadium Stampede. I want to play that. I'm so excited bad. to. I'm excited to ride around on a horse and hit people. Um, <laughs> but then uh, WWF also had more games. I mentioned No Mercy. A lot of people say that's their favorite wrestling video game of all time. I think it's more because the creativity of it. Um, we'll get into my favorite here in a bit. They also, of course, had Attitude, Raw is War. Besides the ones on the screen here, which we will cover, uh, when there's the brand split, Xbox had the Raw games, which is Raw and Raw 2. I think out of the three consoles at the time, the Raws looked the best. Um, and add a fun little weekly show mode where you, titles could change hands. 
GameCube had the WrestleMania series, which I believe went from 18, 19, 20, and maybe 21. The N64 had WrestleMania 2000. Um, and besides WrestleMania series, the GameCube also had the Day of Reckoning series, which a lot of people love. I it, it wasn't my cup of tea, but I do know that it probably is the most realistic of the three series, the three systems. Um, I played the GameCube ones quite a bit with my uncle. I owned the Raw ones on the Xbox. That's not what we're talking about today. We're going to talk about the ones that started primarily on PlayStation. The SmackDown series, which evolved into SmackDown vs. Raw, which evolved into WWE, which well, evolved into which is kinda 2K. Cool. If you remember, SmackDown was kind of like exclusively on PlayStation at the time, and then X, yeah, and then had the Raw games on Xbox. So kind of when they came together and to be on both consoles at the end there. Good marketing. And it was on the Wii too. It was. I remember. Oh. I, I remember uh, it was not good on the Wii. There's not a good wrestling game on the Wii. But um, besides those, you know, we've got some others thrown in there. Some little fun treats. Uh, I know that people did not like our tier list on Pro Wrestling Podcast. Because they were upset we did not listen to every episode of every show. Um, and <laughs> we ranked their favorite podcast low. Sorry. Yeah. Not sorry. So I'll preface this with saying I have played all of these. It, and I don't have great memories of a couple of them. But it's because I mostly rented them. I didn't own them. But I have owned and played oh, the God. majority of these. You know how many kids are would watch this and don't understand the concept of renting a game? Like going to like movie, yeah. going to like yeah, that's crazy movie gallery like on a Friday after school, like going with your mom or dad or whatever. And yeah, because it's I had Blockbuster, Hollywood Video, and Family Video. And Family Video lasted for me until 2016. So pretty much until... Oh, I was even later than that, actually, because I was out of college. So it's more like 2018, 2019. So pretty much until I had a consistent job, I was able to rent games. Yeah, that's weird that that's not really a concept anymore. <clears throat> well... well... I don't know if it was like this. Said you, Redbox. You know, renting, renting games was yeah. We, we rented games from Redbox quite often, didn't we? We, <laughs> we even drove to the next town over for one. Yes, yes, we did. Um, it was like a luxury to rent a game. Uh, or like, well, yeah, a, like, I, like a reward. Like I had to like every. I think I'd only be able to rent one like during like progress report and report card times. Like if I had good enough grades. I can go and run a game. And I, you, I also that's, know... That's around the time I started running some of these SmackDown ones for my uh, for, PlayStation. For games, you had to sometimes put, like, a down payment because it wasn't just a movie. Yeah. And you also... And there's also a limited window of rent. Like, some movies you could rent for two weeks. Video games, the max was a week. And then you'd come in and return it and hope that someone didn't put a... Uh, Put themselves on a watch list for it, because if they didn't, you could always take it back out. But if they were on a watch list, you couldn't get it back. That's why you should always visit your local library, because that's one of the few places where you can still check out and rent video games, and then you're not stuck owning one if it's terrible. That's that's my biggest side tangent. That's my biggest issue with digital games, is if you get it and it's bad, you're just stuck with it. You can't resell it. You can't return it. You're just stuck with it. There's a lot of bad games out there. <clears throat> well, let's get to let's get to ranking here. We're about ten minutes in. And we haven't ranked a single game. We're giving a little. We're giving a little background. Yeah, but people people are here. They're here for the rankings. They don't care about your opinions or or nostalgia for renting games. I know they're they gonna skip they to they the end and see where we put things and then get mad. Yeah, they want to. They want to know uh, where we put WWE Crash Hour. Crush Hour. So we'll start with SmackDown. Um, I I got SmackDown probably when I was 
really getting into wrestling, so I, I knew most people on the game. Um, and it, it, it was so cool to see all of them on there. And I remember there's a couple. One one just memory I have of this is it did have a create a superstar mode, and I wanted to make Spike Dudley because <laughs> Bubba and Devon were on it. And at the time, I also watched Land Before Time, which had Spike. Well, they didn't have a head model that matched Spike. So I gave him this T-Rex head, just because Land Before Time and Dudley's. Don't know why I did it, don't know what made me do it, but I just thought it was the coolest shit at the time that Spike Dudley was a dinosaur. Um, as I said, it had create a mode, it had a pay-per-view mode, which you'd be able to have titles be defended, and then you'd play the matches, and the game would rank your, rank your matches, rank your pay-per-views. Um... I, I I think that this has an at least once for a ranking. It's it's very nostalgic, but I do think that there are better games. Uh, speaking of which, its sequel, SmackDown Two. My goodness, I I <laughs> it, it kept most of what SmackDown had, and then it added game modes. Like there's a casket. Uh, there might have been a casket match in the first one. There's a lot of extra match types into... There's a larger roster, and then there's people you can unlock through the season mode. And I remember um, I plugged a second controller in, and I had a two-player season mode, Undertaker and Kane. And the way that you'd unlock superstars is... Like, you'd get to the King of the Ring pay-per-view, and for this, Billy Gunn won King of the Ring in real life. So you'd get to the King of the Ring with whoever, and if you beat Billy Gunn... You'd unlock Billy Gunn, hey. and you did. The, you had to do that. You had to unlock Billy Gunn, Stone Cold, the other two faces of Foley, regular Mick Foley, which made me angry because whichever Mick Foley you had unlocked, that was the only one that you could use. So by the time you got to the end, it was just regular Mick Foley. I didn't want that. I wanted Mankind. <laughs> I wanted Cactus Jack. Um, <laughs> What's wrong with regular Mick Foley? I didn't. I didn't want that. You could unlock Pat Patterson. You could unlock Jill Briscoe. There, there's just a laundry list. Shawn Michaels. It, it was really cool, all the people that you could unlock. But um, to get back to what I was saying, The Undertaker and Kane pretty much were unstoppable. So I just simulated everything. And they kept beating the guys I had to unlock. So after simulating like a year, I had everyone unlocked. Then I could go to the exhibition mode. I could go to that pay-per-view mode, which is where... Um, I learned about rank, the ranking system. So I didn't do the pay-per-view mode a whole lot in SmackDown 1, just enough. But SmackDown 2 it had a had a ranking system where if you weren't in the heavyweight title picture, you couldn't, you couldn't challenge for the title, and so on and so forth. And it made it to where I had to do a lot of matches to get people in the right card so I could eventually have the pay-per-view and matches I actually wanted. I loved SmackDown 2... Um, I, I, this was one of the games that before I got money and I frequented video game stores, I tried winning on eBay a lot. This is going from me in collector's item. Oh, wow. I think SmackDown 2 was the first one, first wrestling game I've played, I played, uh, around there. Uh, I remember being I, excited. I, it. I know, I never owned it. Oh, see, I own both of these. I remember being excited for SmackDown 2 that Kurt Angle and Rikishi both were in them. Uh, this was the first appearance for them. I remember it was the first appearance for, like, your Chris Benoit and your Eddie Guerrero. Um, I think if anyone else notable that stands out. This would have been the first appearance for Trish Stratus. Yeah. Yeah, collector's item. Now we're on to SmackDown, just bring it. Um, the SmackDown series is kind of held in regard as the holy trinity of wrestling video games, wouldn't you think? Just bring it, shut your mouth, and here comes the pain. Like, those are usually the three everyone talks about. From the SmackDown series, yeah. Um, especially the latter two, shut your mouth and here comes the pain. Those were the first ones I actually owned. owned yeah, owned. that's... And and that's going to kind of what I was going to get to. Just Bring It was... I'd put it on it at least once. It's not... It, it is nothing like the other two. Um, you can tell 
we're moving into a new graphical era and they're trying to find their footing. The one that I do remember something cool about Just Bring It, um, it was if people were in stables, so say the Hardys and Lita, and you were doing the Hardy Boys versus the Dudley Boys in a hardcore match, up in the top corner, a little screen would appear, and it would show Lita backstage, and then she'd run out, she'd interfere. Uh, just, a, just a cool little thing at the time. Because besides that, interference wasn't that frequent, or if it was, it was just, oh, we're at ringside now. Now we're on to SmackDown, shut your mouth. And so this is the first one in the draft era. Uh, it's one of my favorite season modes because you start it by drafting. Uh, typically... The Rock and Brock Lesnar are taken as picks one and two. Okay. Whether you pick Rock or you pick Brock, um, the other will pick it. You can be your Vince McMahon or Ric Flair. The NWO is in this one. This is the first appearance of Randy Orton. Uh, this has a lot of the guys following the invasion angle. What else pops up? This is the first wrestling game where I completed the story mode myself, not just simulating it like SmackDown 2. Um, and this is one that I'll, I'll, I'll go back to every so often, and I'll do a season mode with the drafting just to kind of see and play around with it. Um, I'm going to give this one a replay it. A replay it? I love this. This one. also. I love this next one I, coming up. Let's say another fun tidbit on Shut Your Mouth is Shawn Michaels is in the game again. And this is when he's with the NWO. So he doesn't come out in any of his Shawn Michaels gear. He wears jeans, <laughs> the black beret, and an NWO shirt. Which always bugged me because after you went so long in the season mode, you can unlock certain people for season mode. And you'd unlock Shawn Michaels, and you'd unlock X-Pac, and I'd want to do DX. Well, it was stupid, because X-Pac was wearing NWO, and Shawn Michaels wearing NWO, so how are you going to do DX? <laughs> no uh, DX for you. No DX for me. Yeah, this next one. Here comes the pain. Uh, collector's item for sure. Oh, yeah. First Let's appearance see. of Brock Lesnar. First appearance of John Cena. First appearance of the world's greatest tag team. Um, the legends on it were real fun too. The Legion of Doom, old school Undertaker, which I don't know if they put in there as like an Easter egg because he was eventually coming back as it. Um, George the Animal Steel, Hillbilly Jim, Jimmy Snuka, Iron Sheik, Nikolai Volkov, Ted DiBiase, Sergeant Slaughter. If I didn't say him, but you know he thought he discovered the Undertaker, which was proven false at Paul Heyman's Hall of Fame induction. Um, Great game. I love the Royal Rumble mode. And that's something, I guess, with everyone up to this point. Uh, my dad and I, or my dad, uncle, and I, we'd put it in, we'd do the Royal Rumble mode, and we'd always do random, and we'd make it where we didn't see who we were, and we'd have a random position, and we'd just have to wait and see. Or better yet, we'd make ourselves like entrance one, two, and three, but random. So you're just sitting with anticipation... And this is when they'd allow, like, women in the matches, too. So I remember it would really suck when, you know, you're number two and number one comes out and it's Kane and number two and you're, like, Lita. <laughs> uh, <sighs> but well, here, here Comes a Pain had a fantastic story mode as well. Yeah. Um, this is where I learned about heels and baby faces, right? Because when you create a superstar on these, you have to make them a heel or a baby face. But then that also impacts where they are within the show and the story mode. And I think it was in Shut Your Mouth as well. But I, again, I didn't pay attention to that then because I wanted certain tag teams, certain stories, and here comes the pain. I'd have to figure out who to make heel, who to make babyface. Um, this, this also has multiple branching storylines. So in Shut Your Mouth, it would kind of follow the real-life ones. Um, Stone Cold picking which show he's going to sign with. The NWO attacking your characters if you're The Rock. 
you and the Big Show going, or you and someone else going over the top rope, kind of like the Rock and Big Show. A lot of repeatability. Here Comes the Pain had a lot of its own original stories. I know one, you got to play as Jerry Lawler in a match because he was your tag team partner. Um, Because he came up for the announce booth because he wanted to help you as those damn Dudleys were attacking you (laughs) or whoever your heel team was on the show you were on. Um, If you didn't have a title going into WrestleMania or you didn't win the Rumble going into WrestleMania, you would fight Vince McMahon in a Hell in a Cell because the first story was always your team against his team. I think I've talked about it on here before. I would always do, uh, I would call it Dead Man Inc. And it would be my creator wrestler, which is me. Uh, the Undertaker, John Cena, Trish Stratus, and because you got to pick your tag partner, pick your third, pick your manager, and then you announce your name, and then a random fifth guy would come out. And I remember one time it was Eddie Guerrero, so I kept it. Um, one time it was Kevin Nash, so I kept it. One oh. time it was Hurricane, so I kicked him from the group. <laughs> there you go. Uh... It's just, it's a fun game. A lot of replayability. I go back to this one as well. I, uh, this one is the first one I, uh, well, I think maybe Shut Your Mouth was the first one I owned. I remember I, for sure I had Here Comes the Pain. And my first creator wrestler I made on this one. And I, I remember it, like, vividly. I, I, I gave myself, like, you know, like, the blonde spiky hair and then Matt Hardy pants. Yeah, the red ones. Yeah, that, those were mine. I used them, and I think I used them for the next couple of games. I always gave myself a lot of tattoos, um, and I'd give myself the Road Warrior face paint, and I'd have my finishing move be the Vertebraker, <laughs> which that that carried into the other games. Um, I'd make myself. I remember I made myself a cruiserweight, and you know I'd I. Even though I play the games, I still need my dad's help with them. And he'd get angry, right? Because you'd get so far into the season mode. And since I'm a cruiserweight and I'm fighting like The Undertaker and The Rock, uh, the these games, if the computer starts getting a leg up on you, you just have to hope they miss. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was a time. It was fun. I really liked it. Um, and, you know, the, the hits just kept coming. SmackDown vs. Raw came out. Um, this had pay-per-view mode again, which you could defend titles. Um, had a really good story mode. Not my favorite in the SmackDown vs. Raw series, but still very good. It it takes a long time for these games to have a drop-off, I think. Yeah. I was Um, gonna win. I think... I wanna see... Because I know after Here Comes the Pain... Every game had legends you could unlock. Um, and I wish I could tell you, like I did the others, if it's the first appearances of certain people. I'm... Yeah, I can't do that for all of them. Um, but the legends in this game, you had Andre the Giant, Animal, Bret Hart, Brutus Beefcake, oh, that's right, Brutus Beefcake, Hawk, Snooka, Old School Taker, Mankind, Old School Kane, Roddy Piper, oh, I forgot him in Here Comes a Pain, uh, and The Rock, which this is his first time that he's a legend. Um, th- this was a fun game. I remember when I got it for this game and 2006, my dad like, stayed the night that I got it. So he could unlock all the shit, so I could go through and play it. Um, oh, nice guy. He like sit up to like he sit up till two in the morning. Yeah, it's funny. Um, a a I, I guess a core memory I have is the superstar that my dad would use for season mode. Just bring it was the Rock. Shut your mouth was Brock Lesnar. So I lied. That was his first appearance. Um, here comes the pain was Goldberg. And then from then on, it was Batista. Likes his big, meaty men. <laughs> um, Says a lot about your dad. Makes sense. But this is a fun game. We, um, this 
Yeah. As well as here, here comes the pain. We really liked the Elimination Chamber as well. That's another fun multiplayer party game to play. Uh, oh, I guess I have to. I guess I have to rank this one. I'm gonna put it and replay it. Yeah, I think it's a good spot for uh, this. The OG SVR. This next one, it's a collector's item. Oh yeah, um, I have it on my computer right now. I, legally, I, I ripped I it love from the desk. Game. Legally, I have it, but I have it on my. I computer. own this one too. Yeah. I don't think I'm the first SVR. I do own Maximum Rush 2006. It has such a fun story mode. It has GM mode. It has the beginning of GM mode. Yep. It's my, fa it's my favorite um, GM mode, to be honest. I, my brother and I just went through a year of GM mode. Uh, he is not happy with me. That's fine. Don probably couldn't even Dined. beat the computer. I, I signed Don Michaels from his show about a month before WrestleMania. Which then made my WrestleMania made event in Armageddon Hell in a Cell for the heavyweight title. And it was like Hogan, Cena, Michaels, Batista, but it, it was stacked. So uh, he lost that year. Um, legends in this game, Andre, Bret Hart, Bulldog, Hulk Hogan's return to the, the WWE games, as well as Hollywood Hogan, Hogan from the 80s, that bastard Jimmy Hart, uh, Mankind, Ed DiBiase, Stone Cold, uh, The Rock, and then Junkyard Dog. If you had a PSP, you could connect it and unlock Jake the Snake Roberts. Oh, yeah, that was real that. cool at the time. Yeah. Um, uh, Great game. Loved being able to defend the titles in exhibition mode. Loved the GM mode. The one thing I remember from the season mode, because this is another good one, um, your character, which I I was I was Hulk Hogan, would have predicament. Would he? This is another one where they started weaving in the real life storylines. Um, does he go with Evolution, or does he go with Eugene and William Regal? And I remember being a kid, and I'm like, why would why would Hulk Hogan hang out with Eugene and William <laughs> Regal? <laughs> so I joined Evolution! Brother. So in the middle of the ring, you got Triple H, Ric Flair, Batista, beating down Eugene, and Hulk Hogan comes in and starts beating him down, too. It would actually be really cool if that happened, like, IRL. Hulk Hogan joining Evolution? Yeah. That'd be funny. Like, this like, also just, has... Just like, do, like, a shot-for-shot -shot recreation of, like, Bash at the Beach... Where, like, you think he's going to come out and save Eugene? And he just drops a leg on him? This game also, for whatever reason, um, as I said, you can defend the titles in exhibition mode. Whoever the Raw Tag Champions were supposed to be weren't in the game. Okay. So they just put the titles on Muhammad Hassan and Davari to start the game. Which is fine with me, because... A, since I'm a Hogan guy, and B, one of my favorite moments was Hogan and Edge winning the titles. Um, and the finisher was on the game where you could do the double big boot. I would just put myself with Hogan and take the tag titles off him. But it was always just weird that they started with it. Abba Sun never won a title, but whatever. And now, oh, it looks like for a little breakup in the action, we got Crush Hour. So for those that don't know, Crush Hour was a twisted metal type game which was very popular at the time um, where it's vehicles with guns blowing each other up trying to play like capture the flag or last man standing yeah. but it was WWE themed and yeah. each superstar had its own car like uh, Kevin Nash had the big old semi Rock Lesnar rode on a four wheeler I believe no Rob Van Dam was a four wheeler um, the Undertaker had his motorcycle. The Rock had a, like, pimped out gold car because he was Hollywood. It was super fun. It was super crazy at the time because I don't know if you remember the beginning, but in the in the game, the story that the Crush Hour was was because Vince McMahon bought every TV channel. 
and he was putting <laughs> WWE superstars like like the one that showed Kane hosting a cooking show. So he had a little kitchen hat on, a little apron, and he's flipping a burger at a grill. Um, so yeah, he he did Crush Hour for his new TV. Uh, it was crazy. I definitely think you should play it at least once. I understand that it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. Um, this one you do need people for. I think a lot of these wrestling games you could probably play by yourself. This one is definitely more fun with the company of others. Split screen. Well, especially because every superstar that's in the game, whether you're doing a four-way, one-on-one, whatever, their, their facial icon will be on the right side of the screen. And they'll say the same phrases over and over. So if you go through that season mode, you're gonna you're you're gonna learn fast what they say. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they got a lot of dialogue from the wrestlers for Crush Hour. Yeah, uh, there's supposed to be a sequel, and this is supposed to be like the beginning of something big. And uh, like all things WWE, when it's supposed to be the beginning of something big, it kind of just dies. Yeah, I'd like to see more like dumb stuff like this, though. Just random. Me too. That's why I like the that stadium stampede like idea, it's like a battle royale, but like wrestling. That's so cool. I know. Oh, we're gonna. I can't wait it. to play it. They got duos on there. I'm gonna make a. Cr- we're gonna find duos. I don't, know, I don't, I don't know if they are. Um, ne- next game in the series. SmackDown vs. Raw 2007. Uh, this one. And pretty sizable legends. We had Bam Bam Bigelow, Bret Hart, Chris, not Chris Master, Dude Love, Dusty Rhodes, Cactus Jack, Eddie Guerrero's first appearance as a legend after passing away, Hulk Hogan, Jerry Lawler, Jim Neidhart, Mankind, oh, got to scroll, Mr. Perfect, Roddy Piper, Shane McMahon, Steve Austin, Taz, The Rock, and that's your legends. Um, I, I this is another stacked roster. I don't know if I said that for 2006 or not, but this one is stacked as well. Another good GM mode. Um, it was always weird having Eddie on there after he just passed away. Yeah. But, I mean, I get it. They got to make their money off him. Um, this game has a bug in it for the GM mode. Where mm. if you have a, if you have a certain copy of the game during its print cycle, then, so say I'm smacked on your Raw. We set up all our matches. And you play all your Raw matches. It won't register your wins and losses it will carry them over to mine. So say your wrestler A beat your wrestler B in your first match, my wrestler A will then beat my wrestler B in my first match, and yours won't register. So you just have to stimulate it. Nice. I like that. Yeah, my brother my brother and I found out, oh, it, it's not fun, especially when you get it all laid out and you're thinking, like, this is going to be a great week because of this, this, and this. And then that happens... Um, I remember Navari beat Triple H <laughs> on my brother's show because this happened. Uh, he was not a happy camper. But 2007, I think this one, I would put a replay it. Replay it? Replay it. I'd now this next it. one is... This next one is probably my favorite. Um, I like this one even better than 2006. I know that's a, it's a different opinion than you might hear. But I just have a lot of nostalgia for this game. This is the first one that includes ECW. Yes, yeah, I remember. Which, my only gripe of the game is when you do GM mode with this one, you can do ECW. But because Paul Heyman, you know, walked out and all that shit. Um, Tommy Dreamer's the ECW. Um, what do I want to say? The ECW general manager. Oh, 
Uh, and the issue with that is, it means you can't use him in the GM mode. I, I gotta be, the funny thing is, out of all of the ECW originals that are in this game, he was in ECW like the longest. Uh, this is also post the draft when things kind of got mixed up. So, you know, Sandman appears for Raw. The McMahons are on Raw because the feud's they're in. Um, Hardcore Holly was a Nintendo DS exclusive. So, I mean, you got that DS, you got that Bob Holly action. Um, Eddie Guerrero, Sergeant Slaughter, and Jim the Anvil Nightheart were all PSP exclusives. Which I could live without two of them. Um, Who's two? The, oh, Nightheart and Slaughter. Okay. I but, um, I'm going to say it. Um, the other legends, I mean, it, it, it's stacked when you don't know those. You got Bret Hart, Mick Foley, Rick Rude, Roddy Piper, Sabu, Steve Austin, Terry Funk, The Rock. Um,. Sabu is listed as a legend here because I think at this point he's already quit and left ECW. So <laughs> they had nowhere else to put him. Plus, you need more ECWs. This is the first game that had the Power 25, to my knowledge, um, which also had a ranking system. You know, if your guy wasn't in your top five on your show, then he couldn't go for the heavyweight title. Oh, get me angry because if someone was in a tag team, they would have to be ranked the same. Which kind of screwed you over because a lot of the tag teams on this game were big names. X Brothers of Destruction. Things that you wanted separate, uh, or the Hardy Boys even, but the game kept together. Um, another good season mode out of this one. I, this, this one is just my all-around favorite. It was a tough season mode. Regardless of the show you were on, because there's a lot of big guys. You got Mark Henry, Kali, Kane, Undertaker, Umaga, uh, even Snitsky. You had to you had to brawl your way through it all. And like I said, this is my favorite. Um, and I think 2009 is when the game started to slightly dip. I'd still put 2009 at at least once. I remember I saved up for this game, yeah. and I had to make the decision. Did I buy it from Toys R Us and get the Rey Mysterio figure? <laughs> Did I? Do I buy it from Best Buy and get the DX cards that had the DX codes? Or do I buy it from, I think, Target and get the fat head? I wanted the codes. You know where I bought it from? Where? Kmart. And I got nothing. Kmart, oh! I had a Kmart in my town until like 2016. That was my hookup for so all on games. this one. Th this game was weird. Um, this this had Tony, the Marine. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah, one had. This one, this one had character-specific season modes. So you had John Cena, where he helped wrestle for the honor of Tony the Marine. Mm -hmm. There was a Triple H story mode, where he could either be with Evolution or with DX. There was a Batista and Rey Mysterio tag team one, so you could do a tag team story with someone. And then there was an ECW one, where CM Punk gave people concussions. And, like, Taz and, and Taz and stuff would come out and be like... Uh, I don't condone hardcore wrestling. Yeah, it was, it was, it was not time. Uh, there's also a boogeyman one, where the Undertaker um, was getting threatened by him, and he kept being told by, oh God, I think it was like Finley and I say William Regal, and it's like, oh, he's coming for you, Undertaker, and then it was the boogeyman. Um, and really weird. Um, I'm reading. I'm learning now that uh, do you know there's DLC for this game? If you had it on the PS3. No. 
What was the DLC? Uh, Bushwhackers, Charlie Haas, Doink the Clown, Earthquake, Evan Bourne, Rey Mysterio from 2008, Super Crazy, Ted DiBiase Jr., and Vader. Okay. Not too bad. I think was that um, back when you could like you could buy each one like individually for like two ninety nine. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, I miss those days. This was this was the first reappearance of Chris Jericho and the Big Show in a wrestling game <laughs> for quite some time. Um, the roster was kind of small. That was my big complaint about it. You didn't have a lot of people to really work with. I mean, especially 2009. So I was 13. Um, so let's see. You had Batista, Jericho, Edge, Cena, Kane. Like, you're, you're who's who. But a lot of the young guys hadn't came to their own yet. So, like, you, you didn't want to be Kofi Kingston. You didn't want to be Zack Ryder. You didn't want to be MVP. I liked that. I liked MVP uh, back around this time. I didn't. I thought. I thought it was a dork. Was Orlando Jordan in this game? Orlando Jordan was in one of them. I don't. Let me. Let I, me don't, I don't remember. If it was oh eight or oh nine. But he would always. He's be... in two thousand eight. Okay, in two thousand eight, he'd always be my top heel for some reason. I love making Orlando Jordan <laughs> like the shittiest bad guy ever. I would, in 2006, put Heidenreich and Kane together, because Heidenreich was supposed to be a super Nazi and Kane was a demon, so I called them Team 666. Um, so, SmackDown vs. 2010 is one of those I don't have a whole lot of memories on. I rented, I didn't own it. I'm gonna say, play at least once. I won't go too much into it, except letting you know who uh, the legends were you could get on this one. There was Bob Orton, Dusty Rhodes, Ted DiBiase, Mr. McMahon, Stone Cold, The Rock, and Trish Stratus. That was another thing I thought was missing from 2009. Not really a lot of legends, legends in it. No. Well, speaking of legends, Legends of WrestleMania. Yeah. They had all the legends. Oh, see, the, this... This was a fun game. Um, it was weird because we needed finishers. You had to do these button, these QTE button prompts. Uh, a lot of people tend not to like this game. I have good memories of it. And it was one where in exhibition mode you could change the titles back and forth. Um, I would put this one also in at least once. A lot of, a lot of good games here early on. Yeah, um... 2011 is kind of the same thing as 2010, where I rented it. I don't remember a lot from it. Um, oh, I guess that's something I didn't. If I talked about the Legends in the One, I should probably talk about the DLC you could have got from 2010 as well. Um, Stone Cold was the only downloadable content. So, if you wanted Stone Cold, yep, if you wanted Stone Cold, you had to download him. Nice, damn. Alright, and then Smack the Versailles 2011, uh, the legends on this one, you had Bret Hart, British Bulldog, Jake Roberts, Jimmy Snuka, a first appearance from Lex Luger, Mr. McMahon, Ricky Steamboat, first appearance from him, Rob Van Dam, Shawn Michaels, Stone Cold, Terry Funk, The Rock, The American Badass Undertaker, and then The Luger, Bulldog, Bret Hart, and American Badass Undertaker were all downloadable. You could also download Chris Masters, because I think this is when he was coming back to the company, David Otunga, Justin Gabriel, and Wade Barrett from the Nexus, Layla, and John Cena... Um, let me see. I have to imagine on this time the roster's pretty... Yeah, the roster's pretty stacked. You had a young Drew McIntyre, a young Dolph Ziggler. You still had your Batista. You still had your Cena's. Sheamus was on this. He's on the cover. Um, yeah. Fella. But, uh, like I said, I don't have a lot of memories of it. Now, WWE All-Stars... 
I have a lot of memories of. Uh, it's a fun, goofy game, kind of like we talked about before. A lot of high octane moves. You could jump from turnbuckle to turnbuckle. The goal was to knock the person out each match. Um, to unlock people, you had you'd have to go through. There's three modes. There's a single mode where you'd face the Undertaker at the end. A tag team mode where you'd face DX. Or then they'd have those matchups. You know, legends versus uh, current stars. And that's what the game was kind of built around, was the fantasy warfare. Um, of course, CM Punk and Stone Cold had their their meetup, their match. Uh, a quick way to unlock the people in this is as long as you beat the guy that you had to unlock. So you could face your buddy and at the end of it be like, hey, I need to pin you now. Um, <laughs> the... Yeah. It, the fantasy warfare greatest warrior was Seamus and Ultimate Warrior. Oh, you get it. Ty Celtic Flyer was Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio. Okay, okay. Yeah, you had to you had to unlock Eddie. Um, innovative offense was Ricky Steamboat and Kofi Kingston. Some of these were a bit lazy. Perfectly awesome was Mister Perfect and the Miz. Okay. <laughs> uh, that one you'd that one you'd have to play twice to unlock them both. Greatest big man was Big Show and Andre. Superior lifestyle was Punk and Austin. Excellence of execution was Bret Hart and Edge. Okay. Uh, coldest snake was Jake Roberts and Randy Orton. A Stars and Stripes showdown was Slaughter and Swagger. Oh, you had to unlock Edge and you have to unlock Slaughter and Swagger. Uh, biggest superstar was Hogan and Cena. Most charismatic was Randy Savage and John Morrison. Yeah, when I think of charismatic wrestlers, number one, Macho Man. And then I think who, who could possibly be up there? Number two, and you know what? John Morrison, I think, is up there for sure, yeah. If you want a good laugh, um, this next one is Ruthless Aggression. These all-stars fight with ruthless aggression that spark fear in their opponents' hearts. Kane and Jimmy Snuka. <laughs> Just... Murder and a guy who plays a serial killer in a movie. It's like Vince knew. Um, then there's Undisputed. If you live in Knoxville, because, you're you know, murdering the... your rights. <laughs> These two held the Undisputed titles. The Rock and Triple H. Pride of Scotland. Roddy Piper and Drew McIntyre. Nice. And Mr. WrestleMania, Shawn Michaels, and The Undertaker. Yeah, you got that in real life. There's also DLC for this one, too, if I remember. So I was excited. I remember Legion of Doom was on it. Okay, so there's Honky Tonk Man. Then there's the American Dream Pack, which is the Million Dollar Pack, which is the Ted DiBiase's. Then you can get R-Truth, and then a package called All-Time Greats, which was the Legion of Doom, Jerry Lawler, and Chris Jericho. You'd think that'd be your last pack, but the last one was one called the Sun Charisma. The big Boss, Mark Henry, and Michael P.S. Hayes. So, Honky Tonk Man was free. The American Dream Pack was only... You could get the middle free if you're from GameStop. After that, it was at nine. Ours for free. The All-Time Greats Pack was three ninety nine, and Southern Christmas was 9 and So, not bad prices. Uh, again, this is a party game. This will make you upset. I'm going to put replay it. And I know I said I didn't have a lot of memories of SmackDown vs. Raw 10 or 11. I have a lot of memories. I don't know. 12 is the first wrestling game in years. I really played it. Um, I have nothing but good things to say about this. This has one of my favorite universe modes on it. That's the first universe and, mode, right? Or did 2011 have universe mode? 
don't remember which if they did. I I twelve was the first one that I played a lot. Um, yeah, it did return from the previous year, so it was in twenty eleven. Um, so this game had the Road Warriors. It had. Arn Anderson. It had Demolition, Booker T, Brock Lesnar, Eddie Guerrero, Edge, Edge and Christian Classic, Hawk, Jerry Lawler, Jim Ross, Mast Kane, Kevin Nash, Mick Foley, Mr. McMahon, Randy Savage, Ricky Steamboat, Shawn Michaels, Stone Cold, The Rock, Trish Stratus, and Vader. Um, the Rock was the first DLC because he was, you know, the cover guy. And then you could also get Alicia Fox, Batista, Brie Bella, Brodus Clay, The Edge and Christians, Jerry Lawler, Jim Ross, The Masked Kane, Karma, Michael Cole, Mick Foley, Nikki Bella, The Randy Savage, The Shawn Michaels, The Trish Stratus, and Vicky Guerrero. Uh, I believe there was also extra skins for the Legion of Doom as well. Um... I loved this universe mode because if you did certain things, it would trigger certain things. So if you, you know, if you won the Royal Rumble, then I think Brock. Le no, if you won your first match in the universe mode, Brock Lesnar would come out. If you won the tag titles, Demolition would come out. Stone Cold would come out after a year of it, so on and so forth. It was really cool. The story mode was super interesting. <clears throat> it had. The WCW Invasion. Um, and, you know, it was Rey Mysterio, Big Show, Cody Rhodes. All represent WCW. And then you had to help the WWE. Um, I remember WCW also had, like, Arn Anderson and Ricky Steamboat. Kevin Nash as well. It was just, it was a fun time. I loved this game. I loved the universe mode. Uh, nothing but good things to say about it. So that's why it, for me, is a collector's item. I respect it. Uh, I remember 12 was kind of around the time where uh, the New Legacy Inc. I don't know if they went back and played it. I don't think they were around at the time. They had all those crazy ass, like you can create a story or like download them. From others. Oh yeah. I remember that was a big thing around these one around these games. Now this next game is all about the Attitude Era for the first of two times in WWE games. Um, I think this one did it better because it wasn't just Stone Cold centric. It showed everything. It, it was cool to take a walk through memory lane. Doing the match where Mankind and Dude Love introduced Cactus Jack to fight Triple H. And that's how you unlock your people. Was going through that showcase mode. This was the first time that they kind of they went back to that, I guess you'd say. Um, let's see... Uh, there wasn't really Legends because you just had Attitude Era. And there's a lot of people that this was their first time back in a game or um, their first appearance in general. It was it, The DLC in this one was fun. Oh, it was this one that Hawk and Animal had the separate, the new gear. But you could get, listen, listen to this kind of mix of DLC. You had AJ Lee... Antonio Cesaro, Brian Pillman, Chainsaw Charlie, Damian Sandow, DDP, Drew McIntyre, Gangrel, Goldust, Grandmaster Sexay, The Usos, Layla, Mike Tyson, Natalia, Rikishi, Ryback, Scotty Tuhati, Tensai, The Ministry Darkness Undertaker, Val Venus, and Yoshi Tatsu. What a group. So this is one where forget how they came out but um you could either buy them separately or in a group i remember i skipped on sandow i missed the ddp window and i didn't want to have to do the extra dlc 
I did I skipped on Gangrel, skipped on the Usos, and Too Cool or Grandmaster Sexay. Um, and Yoshi Tatsu and Val Venus. I, I I paid for a lot of them individually. I remember I got I had Ryback, and this is where I created a Goldberg so I could have Ryback and Goldberg in Universe mode. This was like peak Ryback. Uh, Mike Tyson was in this, and which is great and all until you get to when we get there, two K fifteen, <laughs> where they didn't have the rights for him again, and it was just some bald guy called the Enforcer. Yeah. Uh, I thought 13 improved on the gameplay for 12, and I really liked the showcase mode. Well, I really liked the universe mode. I thought the showcase mode for being an Attitude Era was very fun as well. I just don't have as much memories of it. It might seem crazy, considering I just had improved on it, but I'm going to put it and replay it. This is my first game back owning it as a wrestling fan. Uh, I think since SmackDown vs. Raw 09. I think that was the last one I owned. Uh... I kind of took a break a little bit after that. And I never... Yeah, and I picked up 13. Actually, I remember I rented WB12 right before 13 came out from our local... Uh, we had a, a movie gallery, that's what it's called. I don't think those are... Okay. Um, I rented 12, and I played it for like a week. And then when I got WB13. So, yeah, there's my first one back. I like playing as Punk. So it's funny that I mentioned that the Attitude Era is redone in a future game Um, because recently we had a 40 Years of WrestleMania (laughs) and WWE 2K14 actually had a WrestleMania mode. This would have been the 30 Years of WrestleMania. Yep. Um, And because they did this then... I think it made the newer game lack because they did it right with this. Um, DLC for this game was just off off the wall. And Biggie Langston, Brie Bella, Bruno Sammartino, NWO Kurt Henning, Dusty Rhodes, Fandango, Jake Roberts, NWO Kevin Nash, Outsiders Kevin Nash, Nikki Bella, NWO Randy Savage, Rick Rude, NWO Scott Hall, Outsider Scott Hall, NWO Scott Steiner, Summer Ray, NWO Six, NWO The Giant, Ultimate Warrior, Biker Undertaker, and Virgil. I remember Virgil was free and Summer Ray was free. Um, it was awesome to have Bruno Sammartino in a game and Dusty in a game. All my favorites. Let's see if I can find just the the WrestleMania mode matches themselves. Cause they they did it right with this one. I think they did one of each mania. Because I know two K twenty four they skipped like multiple manias. You essentially go from like Hogan, like Hogan era manias to you do like one or two attitude era ones and then you're in like your John Cena. They skipped a lot. Yeah, so for those that pl- for those that played that one, or that played um, ten years prior, they put out the better game, <laughs> which had Andre versus Big John Stud, Hogan versus Bundy, Steamboat versus Savage, Hogan versus Andre, Savage versus Ted DiBiase, Savage versus Hogan, Warrior versus Hogan, Hogan and Slaughter, Savage versus Flair. Bret Hart versus Yokozuna, and then Hogan versus Yokozuna immediately after. Michaels and Razor, Bret Hart and Yokozuna. Taker and Bundy, Diesel and Shawn Michaels. Undertaker and Diesel, Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart and Stone Cold. Undertaker and Kane, The Rock and Stone Cold. Triple H, Rock, Big Show, McFoley, The Rock and Austin. Rock and Hogan, Jericho and Triple H. Michaels and Jericho, Rock and Austin. Cena and Big Show, Goldberg and Lesnar, Brad, Sean, Cena, Edge and Foley, Batista and Taker, Cena and Michaels, Michaels and Flair, Orton, Cena, H, Edge, Cena, Big Show, H, Orton, Jericho, Edge, Batista, Cena, Taker, Michaels, Edge and Del Rio, Miz and Cena, Taker and H, Punk and Jericho, Rock and Cena, Brock and H, Punk and Taker, and Rock, Cena, 2. 
So they had more than one for each in some instances. But it was a great mode. Um, great game. Collector's item for me. Well deserved. Well deserved. Uh, now we'll just make a note here for these next couple ones. We were just we were we moving from the PS3 versions to the PS4 versions of these games. Oh, so, yeah. Just to uh, make a little note here. I don't know how many of them stay on the PS3 after this. Uh, but I know the 2K15 Two. is the first one that was on the PS4 that we had on the dorms. Yes, I know 2K15 was uh, PS3 as well. 2K15 is where you can notice a significant drop, I think. Yeah, it's going to the next gen from the PS3 to PS4. You lose a lot of like features. Everything was pretty bare bones. The graphics look great. I think that was the only... Uh, yeah, it was like a breath of fresh air with the graphics. Yeah. Oh. And then I forgot to say for that 14, the big thing with that was Ultimate Warrior reappeared. The WWE. He was the pre order bone. And he was commercial. And then everyone thought he was a good guy. Um, go to 2K. <laughs> then we go to 15. And that was the Sting one, correct? 15 was Sting. 16 is... Sting. Uh, I forget who 16 was. Because 17 was gold. Sting. Right? Sting. Yeah, Sting made his big return. They had that really badass trailer with everyone and the violins. Um... Fifteen. The DLC was a typical DLC. It was in season. What were they called? Like a season pass. Oh, yeah, because they'd be split up most of the time. Um, well, a lot of them would be anyway. Because you had, you know, that the eighties mode with the Ultimate Warrior, and that's where you got the Hulk Hogan's and the Honky Tonk Man, Andre Bigelow. Maybe not Bigelow. Savage. Um, then you also, other DLCs, you know, Adam Rose, because the NXT pack, Del Rio from the One More Match pack, Big Show 11, Christian and Daniel Bryan 11 from the One More Match pack, Edge as well. The Edge looked like dog shit in this game. Um, they did not care about his model or his hair at all. DDP was in it for the WCW pack, which was an odd one, because it was DDP, Bam Bam Bigelow, Finley, Lex Luger, and William Regal. Um, and you could also, then Ryback 13 was on here. Um, I don't remember which pack he was for. Emma was downloadable content. The Usos. Rick Rude for that Warrior pack. There's a Hall of Fame pack from, uh, which Mark Henry was included on. There's just some interesting, oh, Hunter Hearst Helmsley was there for the Ultimate Warrior pack. Then you could also get Victor of the Ascension and Connor as well. It was kind of a mixed bag. Paige's first appearance. That was yes. a lot of people's big thing was to get Paige and Emma. Um, this game, yeah, we did play to the dorms. I remember I pissed a lot of a lot of my friends off of playing it because I would take the Usos and they'd have an arm drag and a super kick. <laughs> and they I, I could win with them no matter what. Uh, this is the one where our third roommate would judge how I do my universe mode. Uh, cause I, I put like Seamus and Evolution. Cause I didn't, I never liked using, I try to keep my universe mode somewhat realistic with the people involved. And so I wouldn't have Ric Flair fight and I wouldn't have Batista on there. So it'd be Triple H, Randy Orton, and Seamus cause they were workout buddies. He didn't like that. Um... You didn't like much of anything. This is the one, I don't know if you remember, you would do your universe mode, and then you'd have someone that you'd want to win Money in the Bank or Royal Rumble. So then you'd slot me in to either of them as either like Cesaro or Dolph Ziggler. Then I'd kind of run the gauntlet until in the Rumble if your guy was in, or Money in the Bank until your guy was about to win. 
Yeah. And then I'd kind of just go off and do my own thing. <laughs> I remember that. Like yeah. Cesaro, I remember I'd, us- I'd usually start the rumble, and I'd just keep it controlled. And sometimes you'd be like, oh, I want these people in the Final Four as well. And I'm like, all right. Um, I'm just a booker here, you know? It was fun. It wasn't great. Um, like I, like you said, besides the graphics, nothing really to write home about. I think this is going to be my first sell it. I, th- I, I would have disagreed with you at anything other than sell it. Above sell it, to be honest. I do remember I finished the career mode on this one, and it pissed us off because it has you fight the same people over and over until you get a title. And as soon as you win the heavyweight title, it like shows you all these matches throughout your career, and then it sets you up against Brock Lesnar in your retirement match. How stupid! It was it was dumb. It was horrible. Um, I, I seen you do it, then I stopped playing in mine. Yeah. Like, I'm not even going to finish it. And then came 2K16. Everyone was so excited! Myself included. It's the Stone Cold one. Um, And the reason people got less excited is because when a Stone Cold pack is announced, I assume that you're going to get some ECW stuff, some WCW stuff. There's like... Maybe two WCW matches and one ECW match. What a waste. Um, and then the you figure the Attitude Era stuff is the same shit. And Stone Cold's career barely lasted out of the Attitude Era. Yeah. So you might as well just play 2K15. <laughs> um, this one had um, a heavy NXT presence in the universe mode. And it had a good community creations. Yes. Um, I remember uh, I, I downloaded James Storm and Chris Harris to have America. Well, I downloaded James Storm and I made Chris Harris to have America's Most Wanted NXT. I also made David Hartsmith, and that got a lot of downloads, which was weird. The DLC was pretty stacked. Um, Typhoon and Earthquake, Trish Stratus, The Rock from 2000, Ted DiBiase Hall, um, as a manager, Tatsumi Fujinami, Stevie Ray. Sherry as a manager, Scott Hall, Samoa Joe, Roddy Piper, Rikishi, Ricky Steamboat 91, Ric Flair 91, Randy Savage 91, Murphy, Mr. Perfect, Miss Elizabeth as a manager, Luke, Lita, Larry Zabisco, Kevin Nash, Jimmy Hart as a manager, of course, Jake Roberts, Fernando and Diego, um, El Conquistadors, Dusty Rhodes, Dustin Rhodes, Colonel Robert Parker, Butch, Booker T, Blake, Big Boss Man, Art Anderson, Alundra Blaze, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 okay. He was... As the T1 and the T2. Awesome. Good entrances, though. Um, I had a lot of fun with the creative wrestlers in this game. Yeah. Uh, Mike Whipwreck was also in the game, but he was, like, the only ECW guy in it. Um, and then uh, this game is where they really started. I mentioned it before, but they really started going heavy on the DLC packs. The people would be grouped together like, oh, this is the Hall of Fame class. Or, oh, this goes to this. Or, oh, this is the Dangerous Alliance pack. That kind of thing. Um, a lot of complaints with this game. I donate this to the bin. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. I remember it a little bit more fondly than you, I guess. I think that if you're going to do a showcase mode almost identical to the one two years before, I'm not going to have a good time. Okay. It's, this is your uh, tier list? I thought 2K17 was definitely a step up. Like you said, this was the intro to Bill Goldberg. Um, and then you could also download Bruce Beefcake, Eddie Guerrero, Greg Valentine, Sid Vicious, and Tatanka. As well as Austin Aries, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, Ty Dillinger, and Mojo Rowley. Um, 
this is another one of those, kind of like 10 and 11. I owned this one. I just don't have a lot of memories of 17. Uh, we would have been juniors, so I think the only time that I really played it, besides going home, was if I came and hung out with you. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put this one and sell it. Now we're at WWE 18, which this was the Kurt Angle game when Kurt Angle made his triumphant return to the company. Um, I'm pretty sure Rob Van Dam was also DLC on it. Uh, I thought this was a fun game. I still, this was the last one that I myself have bought and kept and owned. I had a long universe mode on it. I really liked this one. I want to say, like I said, the DLC was very fun as well. I'm sure people are getting tired of the DLC, but to me, that that kind of makes the game fun. I don't know about you. Um, kind of thinking, like, oh, who, who are they going to be able to add? Who's missing? Uh, good DLC can make a good game great, but you can also make an, an average game bad. There's some of these games, yeah, so, like 2K22, I think we'll get to it. I had a pretty crappy uh, DLC, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. One of the recent 2Ks have, has like the worst. Uh, this one had the Kurt Angles, so regular Kurt Angle and Harry Kurt Angle. And you had Batista 10... John Cena 06, John Cena 10, and Rob Van Dam 06. And this these came with the John Cena editions, or you could buy them later on. Then you could get Beth Phoenix, the Hardys, and the Rock and Roll Express. Alistair Black, Drew McIntyre, Elias, Lars Sullivan, and Ruby Riot. Uh, being plays the Rock and Roll Express is very fun. Having Rob Van Dam and Kurt Angle back on a game. And I just, this game always feels smooth, even going back to it. I'm going to put this on replay it. Two K nineteen's next. Oh, is this the one? I like this one. This is. I like this one too, and this had a really good DLC, didn't it? This had the Von Erics. So this was like a large. Yeah. So this one just to start. Really. Candice LeRae, Dakota Kai, Lacey Evans, Leo Rush, Maria Canales from 08, Mike Canales and Ricochet, Bobby Lashley, EC3, Hanson and Rowe, Dusty Rhodes from 85, Randy Savage from 92, Ric Flair, Ricky Steamboat from 87, Roddy Piper and Undertaker from 02, Rey Mysterio and Ronda Rousey. I thought... Maybe the Von Erichs were just in the game. Oh yeah, they were never DLC, they are just in the game. Um, but this is a, this is a loaded pack. And yeah, 2K19 is a fun game. All it did was improve upon what Teen did. Um, and I think in this instance, that means that it's a collector's item. Yeah, I think 2K19 is the best 2K wrestling game. I'll go on. Yes. I'm say that. For sure. Yeah, there's I, I don't really remember hearing anything bad on this one. The next game, I believe I remember hearing a lot of yeah, negativity yeah, towards. I'll, I can handle this one for you. Because I don't know if you played this one. Yeah. These next couple ones I can handle um, for you. 2K20. I played them, but not a lot. The, yeah. is the It's the worst uh, like opening. Like how, I don't know how they were able to release a video game this bad on launch. Um, riddled with glitches, bugs. It was essentially unplayable. Um, even then, when you did, when it did, like get fixed, uh, it still did wasn't we live that. Together? No. No, we wouldn't have. No. Why do I remember you? Maybe we just talked about it, but yeah, you were hot. You were angry. It was. It was. It was. A, I think this was one of the ones I like because I, I was working a lot of hours. At my job, so I was like, you know, I'm gonna buy it. I'll buy the the deluxe one or whatever it is, so I'll get all the stuff. Yeah. I usually don't do that. I was like, 
this is it, you know, 2K19 was so great, 2K20 is just even better, you know, how, how can you, how can you go from the best one to, to the worst one, you'd think, you know, maybe it's just a slightly decrease in, like, or something, you know, but it's an updated roster, you know, I can get over it, you know, I'm not too nitpicky at games, but 2K20 yeah. sucked, it, it's the worst video game, probably, people, people call it the worst video game released, like, not just wrestling game, just, like, game in general. Yikes. Or maybe maybe, guess, maybe sports uh, game in a more general term. But, this is, like, this is the E.T. of wrestling video uh, games. It should be I brought guess, out to, to parts unknown and buried. An, an editor's note on uh, 2K18. I said I bought it. I actually didn't buy it. Uh, my brother got it for me for Christmas and had my mom get me the deluxe edition. Um, and didn't realize that that meant I got all the DLC already, so he had her get me, like, a like a $50 PlayStation gift card as well. So then I put the game in, and it's like, you have all the DLC. I'm like, oh, no. So what did you do with the gift card? Um, maybe it wasn't 50 maybe it was 20 I bought this game called Brawl Out, which was gonna be an indie version of Super Smash Brothers, and... How that worked. It was okay, so it was okay. It, it was all right. It was okay. We want to talk about it's battlegrounds. Okay. What happened in battlegrounds? I never. That's the, that's the only game so, here I had. Battlegrounds played. should have been fun. Damn it! Um, it was all stars with a much bigger roster. Oh, speaking of roster, that's what I. That's why I didn't get to say the DLC from Two K Twenty. Let's oh, yeah. see. There was. Oh, there's the Bump of the Night pre-order pack. Demon King, Finn Balor, Fed Up Sheamus, Frank and Strowman, oh, Pilgrim yeah. Rusev. You just were fucking the reminded fiend. me. Oh, the Fiend the, was the only one that Swamp was good. Father, Swamp yeah. Father Bray Wyatt, Unleashed Randy Orton, Wicked Aleister Black, Zombie Cesaro, Zombie Ono, Zombie Robert Roode, Zombie Sami Zayn, and Zombie Sasha Banks. Yeah, they had that stupid Yikes. fucking game mode on there. Where you had to play as like yikes. The only thing that kind of was cool from that was you can unlock like weapons, like a, like a tombstone or something. That you can use it in like universe or uh, play now, I believe. And that was about it. Uh, but yeah, I was that all the DLC. Looks, There's no other DLC that year. Um, it looks like there is a SmackDown collector's pack, which had China, Hollywood Hogan, Mankind, and The Rock. Which, I mean, that's kind of cool. Oh, yeah, but that, no. But that is so basic, though, for DLC. Those guys should be in the game. Like, in the game. Base. base game. Well, Hogan, let's see, in 20, I think this is when they brought him back again. <laughs> oh, so he's like the pre-order bonus for this one? Um, For the SmackDown collection, yeah. I'm trying to see. And then I guess there's a Wasteland Warriors one. Where they look like they're in Mad Max, and it's like Samoa Joe oh, and yeah, Batista, yeah, yeah. and yeah. what the hell? Yeah, I had the fucking, I bought this deluxe edition super duper pack to get the all the cool DLC they'll have. Oh my and god! Then, and then Southpaw Regional Wrestling. Why? I think they just had. Well, I think what happened was this the one you have to look it up where they told it having the biggest roster ever. Was that this year? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm assuming they oh, used and then all, all the that... ones they wanted for DLC on the roster, making the biggest ever, and then they're like, okay. And no. the Empire of Tomorrow, Hacker Asuka, Chairwoman Bliss, Amexa Bliss, Damon Sonyaville, Cyber Naomi, Antivirus Carmella, Nia Jack spelled N Y four J four X, and Hacker Johnny Gargano. What are the Wasteland Warriors names? Seth the Wanderer, Overlord Samoa Joe, Corbin the Gatekeeper, Ali Fortune Fighter, Grand Champion Batista, and Corrupted Jack Gallagher. Oh, I will say, my I will say, give him credit. I'll give him a little bit of credit here. I used that Samoa Joe in universe mode. Uh, like has his like attire, I believe. Cause I don't, I don't remember. This was so well, well. Now it's so long ago for me. I don't know if there are like separate characters or alternate attires. But uh, yeah, I think I, I think I did a gimmick change for Samoa Joe in my universe mode. 
I put them in there. Whatever. I don't. I didn't play it you know, for long. It's probably my least played WWE game. I think I went back to two. Yeah, that sounds like a mess. And then the then to make it even worse, COVID happens and we don't get a full fledged, like actual like two K game for, uh, two years. Yeah, we got the the um. Did Battlegrounds come out after that? Then yeah, Battlegrounds came out like in twenty twenty. I remember everyone was. Everyone was worried that this was going to be the new wrestling game. Kind of like when All-Stars came out. Everyone panicked about that. Um, this one for DLC, you had The Authors of Pain, Alundra Blaze, Andrade, The Street Profits, Batista, Big Boss Man, The Iconics, Bo Dallas, Hart, British Bulldog, Buddy Murphy, Cactus Jack, Christian, Chad Gable, China, Curtis Axel, Dana Brooke, Diesel, Earthquake, Eddie Guerrero, Edge was a pre bonus, Fandango, Goldberg, Grand Metalik, The Gronkster, Jay Uso, Jim Neidhart, Jimmy Uso, Kane, Laheem Lillard, um, Lana, Lita, Mark Henry, Maurice, Mojo Rowley, Montez Ford, Mr. McMahon, Mr. Perfect, Ali, Otis, Page, Peyton Royce, Randy Savage, Razor Ramon, Razor, Jesus Rhea Christ. Ripley, Rick Flair, Rick Steamboat, Ruby Riot, Shane McMahon, Seamus, Sony Deville, Sting, Tamina, Boogeyman, Brian Kendrick, Trish Stratus, Tucker, Tyler Breeze, Typhoon, Ultimate Warrior Vader. All right, so the game starts out and you can buy people. So when you play match, you'll have some automatically unlocked, but then you buy people with coins you get. The reason there's so much DLC is because they've released them in sections. So that way... Um, I don't know if it's so that way people wouldn't just buy the same people or something. They'd spread them out. I don't know if they were trying to do it like... Uh, I, I, I don't know what the intention was, to be honest. But there's a lot of DLC, um, a lot of waiting. I waited until the game... I, I played it. Um, it became free on PlayStation Plus, and I bought the DLC pack. So I just unlocked everyone. I unlocked everything. I bought the season pass. It's fun. You, there's um, one level where you have a goat you can throw at people. Um, it's goofy. It's silly. Definitely not your normal wrestling game. Another fun party game, though. It's not as good as All Stars by any means. I'd say played at least once. All right, and then the rest of these three, I'll let you take. Except for, I'm just I'm curious on these DLCs now after that abysmal. Uh, <laughs> 2K22 or 2K yeah 2K20. So in 22 we have Casey. Oh, why I forgot she was a person. Atanzaro, <laughs> Omas, Rikishi, Umaga, and Yokozuna. And you had Boogeyman, Cactus Jack, Dragonoff, Indy Hartwell, and Vader. A Kid, Stacy Keebler, The Hurricane, and Wesley. British Bulldog, Doink the Clown, Dewdrop, Mr. T, Rick. Boogs and Ronda Rousey. And then Commander Aziz, LA Knight, Logan Paul, Machine Gun Kelly, Rob Van Dam, Sray, and Zia Lee. I know this is where when they would announce the deal tag, they have a couple people that are connected. And yeah. then the others you just kind of question. Like the Doink the Clown one, they called it Clowning Around. He's the only Clown in it. Or the hurricane one is the stand backpack. Stupid. Um, what do you think of this game? Um, it's mixed. It's, I have a mixed opinion on it. It's I had a lot of goodwill towards this game because of how so how bad two K twenty is. I could see that they were trying to like actually do something about it. So they had a GM mode. This is the return of GM, my GM. Um, okay. And it was fine. It was really bare bones. Um, you couldn't, I think, uh, like you couldn't defend some of the titles in the game. Um, there's no customization or anything. Uh, you're kind of just drafting and putting on matches. It's kind of arbitrary. There's really nothing going on. Um, it had the NWO. It was like the main like DLC like pre-order bonus. 
Um, oh, okay. I I didn't like that. I just don't like. I just like the, I didn't like the pre order bonus that year. I feel like they should have been part of the game, but I think that's the year they went to the Hall of Fame around there. Um, that makes sense. But the gameplay it was it was improved from two K twenty, but nothing right home about. So I would rate it in the sell it category. Okay. A okay. Higher a two K twenty three. This uh, one, I, I, oh, I was kind of peeking at the DLC. And... Well, real quick, I forgot to say, for 2K22, the showcase mode was, I believe, Rey Mysterio, because he was the cover. Okay. Um, can we get a, a confirmation on that? Because I don't remember. I usually... I I had the... Um, I usually, and if I didn't buy like the deluxe editions... It is the Rey Mysterio showcase. I would... Um, I would just buy the accelerator pack, so I never had the. Yeah, me too. I never played through the, the story modes anymore. Um, and but, a lot of times, the accelerator packs were kind of cheap. Yeah, like, they're, they're still pretty cheap. They're only like three, four dollars. Yeah. If that. But uh, who's the DLC for Two K Twenty Three? So Bad Bunny. Um, was the big superstar pack. Then you had the Ruthless Aggression Era pack, so John Cena's the prototype, Batista's Le- Leviathan, Randy Orton 02, and Brock Lesnar 01. Then you had five packs, which again, they give them names, and it's just, it's odd. Steiner Row pack, so the Steiner Brothers and Hit Row. Um, the Pretty Sweet pack, so Pretty Deadly, Tiffany Stratton, and Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. Race to NXT. Randy Chu, Ivy Nile, Tony D'Angelo, Trick Williams, Harley Race, Revel with Wyatt Pack, Blair Davenport, Bray Wyatt, Joe Gacy, Uncle Howdy, Valhalla, and Zeus, and Bad News U Pack, Andre Chase, Damon Kemp, Eve Torres, Nathan Frazier, and Wade Barrett. Uh, exciting that the Steiners are in a game. Yeah, yeah. Like this game, it's a again. I think another step up. Uh, from Tier Twenty Two, they're after building onto it, um, but there's still some things that like just kind of just like piss you off, right? So okay. the so the superstar mode um, was good. Uh, f- actually, it was actually pretty alright. Uh, entertaining the playthrough for once, I would say. Um, the universe was a universe mode. Um, I don't. I, I to be honest, I this is out of twenty twenty two, twenty three, and twenty four. This is when I played the least because I bought it like two months before twenty four came out. Um. Oh, okay. I like I got like super like late into his life cycle. Um, the John Cena showcase mode was interesting because it was a different take. Instead of showing his greatest moments, they did uh, all of his losses, his big losses. So you got to beat up John Cena uh-huh. over and over again at different times, stages of his career, uh, which I actually had no—I didn't really have no trouble playing through. Um, and then next did something cool where if you lost and like John Cena won, it, they had like cutscenes like made up of like the aftermath of what would happen if John Cena won. So like him leaving one night stand with That's security cool. and people rioting. Yeah, it was cool. Um, but then. Uh, yeah, this is also the first game with Cody Rhodes being back. Um, okay. but then you're like, oh, that's sweet. Yeah, you know, you can let's, you know, it's Cody Rhodes. I mean, what what do you like to do with like most of your wrestlers? You know, like during the game, well, let's change like their attire. Let's change up their the color of their pants or whatever, or give them a new shirt. Yeah. Uh, but if you do that, you lose uh, Cody Rhodes' entrance and his theme song, and you can't apply it back to him. What? Because <laughs> you didn't hear this, so like for them to get the rights to use Kingdom, I guess I don't know. Um, they had it can only be used to, for Cody Rhodes, I guess. And then if you, but so if you edit him, like Cody Rhodes anyway, he becomes a created wrestler technically. Oh my god! So you you can't use Kingdom anymore. So that's uh, fucking nuts. And then. Uh, this is introduced probably the thing I hate the most in video games, especially sports video games. Uh, more microtransactions with their uh, My Faction mode. Um, okay. 
I always try to give stuff a chance, but with their newest release in 2K24, uh, I don't see them going in the doing it in the cool fun direction. And this is purely see, just what, a money grab. What is my faction? I kind I see things where there will be people that are only available in my faction. Yeah, so that's why it's, that's why it's really uh, stupid. Um, so you, you remember Meg Madden Ultimate Team? Yeah, it's essentially that, but for wrestling. So you go and there's these challenges you can do. I never actually played any of the challenges of the game mode, so I don't know how like the gameplay actually is in the my faction mode. But you go in, you have to do these challenges. Uh, to get cards or packs, then you gotta open packs to get these other wrestlers. And then you can trade in your wrestlers for even better wrestlers uh, to like upgrade them. Oh my and, god! Two K twenty three didn't have too many of the um, uh, like ones you can use like outside of the game mode. Um, uh huh. So for that reason, I'll I'll put two K twenty three in the at least once, just for because they continue to improve it uh but this next one 2k24 real quick before you do the dlc while i'm still on the topic of the my faction this is the one where you can unlock people for from my faction to play and play now in universe mode and all that uh and it's really annoying thankfully there really hasn't been anybody uh i miss too much um but i think shameless09 okay. is one uh oh. Let me see if I can look it up real quick. If you want to give me the DLC. Yeah, so the pre-order, um, which was the Cody Rhodes Nightmare Family one, the Cody Rhodes Elite figure, Undashing Cody Rhodes, Dusty Rhodes, Stardust, and Superstar Billy Graham. Uh, people complained and said that Billy Graham didn't make sense. He was Dusty Rhodes' first big WWF feud. Um, read a book. Next, there was the 2K24 40 Years of WrestleMania pack. Um, these, oh, it looks like these are my faction cards. Which, I guess, in the last game, the Ruthless Aggression pack was my faction cards um, as well. So these, you've got Charlotte Flair from 2017, Macho King, Randy Savage, Rey Mysterio from 2006, Rhea Ripley from 2020, and Triple H from 2014. Um, then there is the ECW Punk Pack, Bubba Ray, CM Punk, Devon, Sandman, Terry Funk, and my faction content, ECW Paul Heyman Manager. Then there's Post Malone and Friends, how Hangers, Hunky Tonk Man, Jimmy Hart, Post Malone, and Sensational Sherry. So I'm going to get this out of the way right now. <laughs> don't like the Headbangers. Don't like Honky Tonk Man. Don't like Jimmy Hart. Don't like Post Malone. Sherry, I'm sorry you're stuck with them. Um, and the next pack, Jesus, the Pat McAfee pack. <laughs> Ty Schmidt, Pat McAfee, Darius Butler, Boston Connor, and AJ Hawk. If you buy this pack, like if, if someone goes out and buys this, if if you if you buy the all encompassing one and this comes with, that's fine. But if you buy this by itself, you're an idiot. <laughs> There's no reason that you should pack. I don't care how much you like Pat Mac. If you go download him from the fucking community creations, all right. At least that'll probably have his Seven Nations Army song and not some generic garbage. Um. These other clowns you don't need. Like, why do they do this? Why not put them in my fashion? You, you don't want um, AJ Hawk? No, I don't want AJ Hawk. He's a great linebacker for his time. I wouldn't say great. Clay, Matthew, Clay Matthews is better. I agree. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. And next is the Global Superstars Pack. Carlito, Dragon Lee, Jade Cargill, Curry Sane... Um, Lyra Valkyrie, Michelle McCool, and Nia Jax. So this pack could almost be called the game to the main roster before, or we came to the main roster after the game was in development, except Michelle McCool. I don't know why she's there. <sighs> she's got to throw her in there. Um, and then you have the WC. 
W pack of DDP, Lex Luger, Mr. Perfect, Great Muda, and Iron Sheik. Um, I know you have to fit the Iron Sheik in there, but wouldn't it have made more sense to put him in the Global Superstars pack? Probably. Yeah, does it show you the release dates for all those DLCs? Since this game is currently out while we're uh, making this. Does it does the ECW Punk Pack May fifteenth twenty four or twenty twenty four? Now the next ones they don't come up for uh, quite a while. June sixteenth twenty twenty four, July twenty fourth twenty twenty four, September twentieth twenty twenty four, and November thirteenth twenty twenty four. Why? I and I don't understand why Aaron Sheik's in the WCW Pack, and I'll tell you why. His really his big feud in WCW. It was against Sting. He came in and jumped Sting. Sting's not in the game. But you've got DDP, who had big feuds with Sting. Luger, who was one of Sting's biggest foes and allies. Muda, one of Sting's biggest foes. And Iron Sheik, who the only thing he did in WCW was Sting. Why? Why make a Sting pack without Sting? I know they can't. But... I have a good Sting downloaded from Community Creations. I, we're under control here. But, uh, uh, yeah, they, uh, they fixed some of the things that bother me from 2023. Uh, you can edit Cody Rhodes now, and you can put his theme song on other people if you wanted to. Um, they do have Persona cards, which um, are Seamus09, the Elite Cody Rhodes, the Elite John Cena, like the toys. The toy mm. thing. Elite Hulk Hogan, which you can only get if you buy the toy from Target, but it's too late yeah, now. Because uh, if you the buy Japanese it now, figure, yeah, if you if you buy it now, you can't put in the code. They close the website. Uh, oh, <laughs> Seth Rollins fourteen, so a, like Shield Seth Rollins and Trick Williams. Uh, so you can a lot of those you can unlock with locker codes. So those are pretty cool. Um, the GM mode is a lot better. They've added uh, ECW, I believe, on top of WCW, NXT, NXT 2.0, uh, Raw and SmackDown. Um, more GMs, more of those cards. Like, uh, what do they call them? I don't play GM mode on these new ones. Uh, like ability cards that you can use against other people. Uh, those are actually okay. really cool. Um, but overall... I, I to be honest, I don't really like the gameplay in these new ones. I'm kind I kind of miss like the 2K18 and 19 style of gameplay. Yeah, that's how I felt. I've played 23 with my brother, and it just it I could tell it felt crisper, but it almost felt too crisp if that even makes sense. And I don't like the reversals. <laughs> Me either. It, I don't know, but I I, I I'm not gonna put in the replay it. I think it's just a little bit better than 2K23. So okay. And at least once. I, for a current wrestling game, it's fine. I'd say it's like, like I don't know when people say nowadays like it's like a 6 out of 10. They think it's like really shitty. But it's not. It's not a shit game. Like, it gets, I think a lot of people are reacting like on the like a WWE game subreddit about this game. Like, it's fine. I'm having fun with it. I... I I play my universe mode at least once a week. Every other week, yeah, I'll get, I'll get we got an argument life. with someone about the recent two Ks and um, the AEW game. I remember that. Yeah, I, had, I told him uh, mo most people they say they want no mercy or here comes the pain. Um, those games are twenty thirty years old. Yeah, they're fun to go back to and play, but. As someone who plays old games a lot, you don't want to do that consistently because then your eyes kind of hurt for a little bit after. Because the squinting and the <laughs> graphics and... The only one I go back to constantly is SmackDown vs. Raw 06. And that's just for GM mode. I don't even play the matches. I'll, <laughs> I'll draft a roster and I'll sim to... And I'll... I was sim through all the events and make the matches, but uh, yeah, this is our this is our little list, kind of top yeah, heavy. Yeah, a lot more, a lot more positive than other lists we've had. Yeah, well, I think I think I don't think we're as cynical towards games and like movies and stuff as we are, like people, I guess, because we've been ranking people yeah. for so long. 
because um, this, this is a I, th- I think I think a lot of people have it the opposite way. I feel like they're they like a lot of uh, like wrestlers more than like the media, like movies or probably. games. Because I'll, I'll probably tell you, probably a lot of people will probably put like the first SmackDown versus Raw lower or Two K eighteen even lower. I bet you All Stars people a lot of people will put it in the and uh, Legends of WrestleMania, Crash Hour. A lot of the ones battle probably ones. In- They'll probably be in the bottom ones. I also made a oh, new, yeah. I made a new tier for 2K20. I see that. Just to put it, it doesn't even deserve to be in the trash. It should be somewhere worse than that. But yeah, yet, I think overall, I don't know, either everybody's gonna agree or they're all gonna hate it. But uh, not what's our, new? Not in our place to say. Uh, if you stay to the end, or you, if you literally just skip forward to the end here, just to see where we put everything, uh, you're upset about a certain one. Go back and watch why we put it <laughs> in a certain spot. Uh, yeah. yeah. And follow us on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, we're we're getting close. We're getting close. And oh, if you're not subscribed while you're watching here on YouTube, why don't you uh, hit that subscribe button? We're a couple hundred away from a uh, partnership. So we'd like, yeah, we would like that. The big, the big five hundred. Uh, yeah, help us get there. A couple of our reels lately have helped us get there. Or the YouTube Shorts. So, yeah, just a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. We'll do something special for five hundred. Yeah, we'll we'll play two K twenty. And get mad. I think I don't even know if I still have that. I don't think so. I have 2K22 and 23 somewhere. Well, that's just 2K22. Like T-O-O. Uh, that's not quite. I th- I might have 2K20 <laughs> somewhere. I think I might have it on my console saved. But, uh, yeah, we'll play 2K20 at 500 subscribers. Subscribe.